Hey, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, control light uh, intensity uh, with just the factors. So you no more having to hand keyframe these things and uh, <clears throat> doing it the hard way. So let's uh, jump in here. We got our light, and uh, just for viewing purposes, I'm going to make that visible. So when I render, you can see what the heck I'm doing. Uh, let's clone some of these guys. Throw the light in the cloner. Uh, go to our cloner. Jump up the count. Spread them out a little bit. All right, so we got a whole bunch of lights here. Uh, let's actually spread them out a bit more. So we got all of our lights here. So there's actually a couple ways we can get this done. The first method I'm going to show you is a method specific to light objects and adjusting the intensity. Uh, the second method I'm going to show you not only adjusts the intensity of a light object, but you can adjust uh, attributes on other objects as well. So say if you have a custom piece of geometry that you have a luminance material applied to, you can use an effector to adjust the intensity of the luminance to have it look like it's fading on or off. And I'll show you that as my third example later on in this tutorial. But first off, I'm going to show you the first method that is just specific towards uh, adjusting light object intensity. So let me show you that. I'm going to go and actually use a plane object or plane effector. I'm going to turn the position off. Or I can actually use the color mode, turn it on. And we're actually going to send the uh, blending mode to subtract because we have our light here with full intensity. We're actually going to go about this and affect it and actually turn and subtract the luminance value from the light as the effector is going through it. So to get this to work, we actually have to turn up modify clone. And we're going to change our fall off to linear. So we have some linear uh, fall off going. So the lights will turn on gradually as the uh, effector uh, fall off passes through it. So we're going to change this to positive Y. And we're going to make sure we got our effector actually affecting. So once I threw that plane effector in there, you can see uh, everything below the fall off is off and everything above is on. So if I render this out, see only the lights above the fall off are on. And that's because we have this color mode set to subtract. So as, as uh, the effector passes through, it's subtracting the luminance value and turning and fading everything off. So now if I actually go in, let's actually keyframe this plane effector, move to 90, move this all the way up. So you can see as it's going up that the, uh, the light uh, object in the scene is kind of fading going from gray to just black. So if I bring this all the way up, hit another keyframe, and let's actually render this, make a preview, and let this thing go. So we have all of our lights turned on, and as we have the effector pass up, all of those lights intensity are fading down because we have our modify clone and we have our blending mode set to subtract. So now if we set this to add, it would actually brighten the light. So let me show you that. Let's get to calculating the preview. If we go here, press start, see how it's actually adding to that luminance. So you can kind of see the, the, what's going on behind the scenes. And if you wanted all the lights to actually go from off to on, all you'd have to do is go to your plane uh, vector, go to the fall off, and just invert it. And you can see all of these go black. If I hit render again, you will see that because uh, you inverted it, all the lights will be off. And as the effector passes through, it'll turn all the lights on. So simple as just hitting invert on the fall off. And now I'm going to show you the second method to get this done. We're going to actually need to uh, go between two states 
or even more than that, two states of the object. So we already have our light uh, object at full intensity. I'm just going to hold down control and duplicate this light and make one with zero intensity. So right now it's just cloning uh, and just iterating uh, one light on, one light off. And you can see in the clone, under the cloner, it's set to iterate. But if we go to sort, if I render right away, nothing happens. But once I throw an effector on this guy, so I'm going to choose the plane effector, I'm going to turn the position off, I'm going to change the uh, fall off to linear, I'm going to orientate that to the positive y, and if I render right away, nothing happens. But once I turn up this modify, modify clone and hit render, you can see everything, everything above the fall off is on, and everything below the fall off is off. And why that is is because we have this sort option. And what this is doing is it's sorting between uh, the light with the intensity at 100% and the one with the intensity at zero. So as our plane effector is going through, you can kind of see uh, the, the kind of boundary area or the little fa light fall off area. So the fall off is controlling where the objects are being, the cloned objects are being, being sorted. So uh, right now we have, if I go and animate this, animate the plane object, go to our coordinate, uh, put a keyframe at the Y, and move this guy up, zoom out a little, move this guy all the way up so the fall off clears the top, and then hit another keyframe. If I do a quick uh, preview render here, pops up and if I hit play here actually if I select the right preview file and do a little bit of previewing here so you can see that the the plane effector is going up and turning all the lights off or it's it's changing the clone from the the light clone with the hundred percent intensity to the clone with zero intensity so it looks like it's shutting off now that might be the look that you need, uh, but what if you want to have these gradually decreasing in intensity? Uh, right now it's very sudden, zero to 100, or 100 to zero, sorry. Uh, so what if you want to have it more gradual? So the way the sort option works is it's gonna cycle through all of the clones in the hierarchy. So right now it's cycling through 100 to zero. So now if I go in and if I go, let's make this a uh, 75. So we're going from 100 to 75. Let's go to 50, duplicate this again, and go to 25. Now right away, if I go and have that so it's in the center, hit render. Uh, nothing's happening right now. Oh, I have to actually adjust the minimum maximum to negative 100 so it can pick up some of those lower values. So now, if I just adjust the fall off a little bit here, if I do another RAM preview, let's let this go. Hit play on this. So you can now see it's cycling through uh, the first it's going through the 100 it's going from the 75 to 50 to 25 to 0 and each of these clones are doing that so as I hit play you give the illusion that it's actually the light is just slowly fading off the intensity is fading away so it's looking that's looking nice but what if you want the opposite effect you're, it's just going by the hierarchy here. So if I want it to start at zero intensity, I just kind of flip these guys around. So now I have the 100% at the bottom, 75, 50, 25, and 100. And so everything's gonna be reversed at that point. So, and, and what I had to do was uh, the minimum maximum 
because it was set at zero, it was only going through half of the uh, the clones here. If you have it go from negative to 100 to 100, it's going to cycle through all of these. So be uh, cognizant of uh, your minimum maximum settings. And also make sure that you have the modified clone on, because if you don't have the modifying clone on, it's not going to do anything. So uh, just something to bear in mind. So that's how you can get either a nice abrupt abrupt on off on your intensity or a gradual fade off by uh, adding these you know middle steps between the 0 and 100 intensity and you can add as many of these as you want if you want a little bit more gradual you just make you know a, a 10 20 30 40 50 60 you know you keep going on just use your math skills right uh, so that's uh, how you can control your light so uh, why I actually came up with this uh, was because I needed to create a, a noise meter for a, uh, a hockey team and uh, <clears throat> I made this little sound meter if I render this out so I have all these uh, cylinders with a luminance texture on it as if I zoom in here if I zoom in here if I can hit the right button there we go so if I zoom in and render it's just all these cylinders with this light texture on and uh, I want to go to the same effect I want uh, it's supposed to be measuring the sound so the meter is gonna go up right and the lights are gonna turn on it's kind of like the the uh, What's the little carnival game where you hit the hammer and the light goes up and you want to try to get the bell all the way to the top and the lights go on until you get to the top? I forget what that thing's called. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. So that's basically like the sound meter is as the sound supposedly gets louder, uh, these little, it's going to uh, turn on these little lights up until it gets to the top. So it's kind of measuring the, the noise, but it's really not. But uh, so let me show you how I did this. So it's the same premise as before. I have a cylinder with a texture that has luminance at 170. I have one at 100, and then one with a uh, a darker luminance. Uh, so it's basically turned off. So I just have to go in here, make sure that it's set to sort, and I just need to use another uh, linear plane effector and make sure that is applied to our cloner and it is and I'm gonna turn off the position I'm gonna turn on the modified clone I'm gonna set our fall off to linear and set it to Y so already you can see if I render this out it's going the opposite direction but you have the 170% uh, luminance of this texture and then the one with just the hundred and then the one where it's uh, the darker luminance so it looks like it's turned off so I'm actually facing the wrong way so if I go to negative and if I'm moving this up and down you can kinda see what what I'm talking about so the sound meter so you know as the, as the sound builds you know this meter is gonna slowly go up so we go up until it just all the bars have turned to full luminance so that's the kind of gradual look I'm looking for if I wanted to I can you know duplicate another middle one and make another texture that uh, has say 50% or 60% luminance and throw that texture on there so it's even more of a kind of gradual it's very subtle but if I make this uh, let's make this a little bit darker so you see a little bit more how you have that gradual uh, luminance fade as uh, as the effector the plane effector goes through here so uh, as I did in my other tutorial I use cappuccino to kind of record uh, my mouse movements and it's come in handy since I discovered that what the heck cappuccino actually does even though it's not for character animation solely but uh, 
So what I did is I had to kind of make this camera and as the energy is building, the camera is going to shake a little bit more as the noise supposedly gets louder in this arena that the, you know, this animation is going to be playing. So I kind of had to, you know, gradually have this camera shake build up with energy, shake even more as the noise got louder. So instead of just hand keyframing any, everything, I just went in here and got, uh, where is it? Got my cappuccino open. If you don't know what cappuccino does, check out the tutorial I made called Intro to Cappuccino. Basically it just records all your mouse movement uh, once you hit start hitting record it's like motion sketch inside of After Effects so I want to kind of control the position of this plane effector right so I'm gonna make sure it's down at the bottom and I'm gonna kind of make it make it look like it's measuring the sound all right so I'm gonna go in here and make sure I got uh, 30 frames per second that's a uh, the project frame rate gonna make sure so whenever it records it records in real time and make sure I have my plane effector selected move it down and then hit start real time and uh, as I touch it it's gonna start playing the the uh, vibrate tag animation so now I can start to control this as it gets kind of sh real shaky so I can really adjust and go along with the shakiness of the action here so I just <clears throat> stopped a little bit early there so if I go back and hit play again, <clears throat> with Cappuccino, it made me able to just interact directly with the vibrate tag so I can match the fr franticness of the vibrate tag and has the vibrate tag kind of builds with uh, the shaking, build the <clears throat> build how, f how high up the, uh, these little uh, luminance bars go up. So kind of looks like it's reacting to the shaking of the intensity uh, of the vibrate tag there. So it kind of matches with that and would be pretty hard to try to hand keyframe that uh, to make it look believable and get this kind of uh, sound meter look where it's measuring the noise decibels uh, if you follow me. So uh, there's a couple uses of how you can you know, create luminance textures to uh, fade on with effectors, or uh, as I started out with, uh, how you can get how you control light luminance as well with your uh, light objects. So uh, hopefully you can start using that in your day-to-day -day workflow and never have to hand keyframe a luminance material or a lights intensity ever again so because you just know how to do it with a simple plane effector with the modified clone option enabled so thanks for watching